Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Tony Day here. Today I'm going to go over some basics regarding color space. Now color space is something that is mentioned a lot in passing when discussing editing or color grading in tutorials online, but it's not really explained very much outside of basically somebody just telling you what to pick. So I'm going to do a little dive with you into what color space is and how you can use this knowledge to help you in your color grading. Now I'm going to do the best I can to explain it in the way that I understand it and provide some examples so we can explore it together. I'll keep it as simple as I possibly can, but keep in mind that this subject can get very complex very, very quickly. Okay. So first let's go look at a definition of color space so we can get an idea of what the thing is. According to Wikipedia, the definition is a specific organization of colors in combination with physical device profiling. It allows for reproducible representations of color in both analog and digital representations. A color space may be arbitrary with particular colors assigned to a set of physical color swatches and corresponding assigned color names or numbers, such as with Pantone collection or structured mathematically as with the NCS system, Adobe RGB and sRGB. Okay, that's a lot. So let's try to simplify this so that we can understand how it actually applies to us in the video world. Here is Cambridge in color, and it has a much more detailed and understandable explanation for what we do, in my opinion. I'm gonna point out a few things, but you should probably read through this yourself. It says, a color space is a useful concept tool for understanding the color capabilities of a particular device or digital file. When trying to reproduce color on another device, Color spaces can show whether you will be able to retain shadow, highlight detail, color saturation, and by how much either will be compromised. So let me simplify this even more so that's a little bit easier for us to understand. A color space is an identifier that tells us how colors will be interpreted from a file and builds those colors around a specific white point. These colors may be visible or invisible to us depending on how these colors are displayed on a monitor. Yes, colors can be invisible to us and I will explain that a little bit later. Color space for video also requires a gamma identifier that works alongside color space to interpret luminance information. What this means is that for our understanding of color space, we require two identifying things. One, a color space, which tells us how colors are supposed to be interpreted. And two, a gamma identifier, which tells us how luminance data is supposed to be interpreted. Here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm gonna show you some of the color spaces here just to show how many are available. Just look at all these. Each color space identifier here has a corresponding gamma identifier, even if it is not explicitly stated. More obvious cases of both the color space and the gamma identifier being visible here is something like the Canon Cinema Gamut. You can see there's Canon Cinema Gamut, which is the colors, and then you see Canon Log, which is the gamma. Also, there's the many different kinds of red color spaces where there's a ton of different gammas and color. So, you know, you can go through and see those. There are some color spaces that don't have an obvious gamma identifier, but trust me, there is a gamma identifier in that color space itself. Um, some of them where that's not readily obvious or something like these P3, where there's a D60 and D65, where they've opted to show you the difference in the white point between them. Right now, let's focus on the color space in particular, and we'll talk about gamma later. The most commonly used color space in a final product today is called Rec. 709 which is probably why you have heard of it before. Rec. 709 is a color space that is a standard for most TV displays and is also close to sRGB, a common color space for computer monitors. This color space is widely used because it is a standard, not because it would be considered the best or anything like that. This is important to understand because in my experience, many people in color grading that are new to it tend to be unaware that going outside of standards for viewing can lead to a drastic difference in how colors are displayed on a monitor. If you're not using a standard color space as a reference for your colors, there's no telling what colors people will actually be seeing on their monitor. Here's a graphical representation of Rec. 709's possible colors. You see this D65? That is the identifying white point used for Rec. 709 and really most uh, color spaces that have to do with um, digital displays. D65 is the white point meant for devices such as TV monitors and some other color spaces like P3, may have a different white point. Now that we have a bit of an understanding regarding color values in a color space, what is the difference exactly between different color spaces and how does this affect you or your projects? Well, let's look at these two specific color spaces that are important in my opinion to understand in today's video world. 
These color spaces are Rec. 709 and Rec. 2020. Now in this graphic, we can see the difference between these color spaces and just the color values and what might be available. You see these two triangles. Do you see how much bigger Rec. 2020 is compared to Rec. 709? This means that there are more values available in Rec. 2020 than there is in Rec. 709. Remember what I said before about invisible colors? Well, let's look at this. If you're looking at content that was color graded in Rec. 2020, but you're viewing it on a Rec. 709 or sRGB monitor, can you see all of the values of Rec. 2020 on the Rec. 709 monitor? No, you can't, because those color values are beyond the range of the visible colors on that display. If you have a hard time understanding that, think of it like this. Imagine you're completely colorblind and can only see in black and white. In real life, there are colors out there. There's greens, yellows, reds, purples, all that. But if you are colorblind completely, you can't see them. It doesn't mean that they don't exist. You just simply can't perceive them because your eyes, your brain can't register them. Now, imagine that you're colorblind, but you can only see certain color values. Does that mean that the other color values just don't exist? No, they're just invisible to you or you're not seeing them right. And you may in fact just not be perceiving the color values correctly in the way that you see them. Now back to Rec. 2020 and Rec. 709. If you want a Rec. 2020 color space to be perceived correctly in Rec. 709 at the end, meaning after your color grading, for example, you would need to mathematically change Rec. 2020 into a Rec. 709 color space. If this is done correctly, the colors will look correct. But if it's not correct, then the colors will look strange. Many novices in grading who manually grade their log or raw material do not conform to Rec. 709 standards and explains why there's so much struggle and why colors in their final can look so weird to other people. Okay, we're gonna leave colors behind for a little bit and we're gonna talk about gamma values. There's a lot to talk about with this, so let's begin. The easiest way I can explain this is to show you a graph of different gamma values, so here it is. The gamma values map the brightness of the pixels in a particular way based on math. You can see here, we have VT709's gamma curve, and then we have these other different Canon log curves. Now I'm not gonna go into which log is better or what log you should use or whether or not you should use Rec. 709 or whatever, that's not the point. The point is to see how different each of these gamma values are and understand how they are simply different. And that's what will help you here. Canon log values are not the same as Rec. 709. That means that if your display is a Rec. 709 display, and you take a recording shot and say Canon Log 3, and you play that directly onto a Rec. 709 display, the gamma values will just not look right. Theoretically, if we had a display specifically made for Canon Log 3, then we should be able to play that footage on the display and have it look right. I think it's safe to say though that graders are going to be creating final products in the more common deliverable color spaces like Rec. 709. That means that there needs to be a gamma correction from something like a Canon Log 3 into Rec. 709 so that the product can be viewed properly. This can be done in a variety of ways, manually through using curves and a proper monitor, mathematically through transforms and correction and so on. Okay, so gamma curves can be different. We got it, right? But what the heck, look at this. Rec. 709 has different numbers after it, 2.2, 2.4, these are different gamma curves that you can select for Rec. 709. I will get into that briefly on why you might want to pick a different one, but what I want to do first is expand on the idea that gamma curves can be selected alongside color values. Let's use a transform node to look into this. So if we look here, we can see that there are two options when we transform a color space. This is important because in order to do this transform correctly, you have to know the correct color space, our color values, as well as the gamma values in order to get the results that we want, both for the input and for the output. The color and gamma go together. So that means that for every gamma curve or every color space that you pick, you need to pick the proper values that go into those selections in order to do everything correctly. If you pick, let's say, for a Canon Log 3, if the recording was in a Canon color space, and you pick, say, Cineon color space or some other color space entirely, your results are not going to be correct. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve, and we're going to explore 
these different color spaces and gammas and stuff by using a color space transform node. And all we're gonna do is play around. I'm not gonna tell you what to do um, to make your shots look perfect or whatever. This clip is available below. There's a download link. You can uh, pick that up. It's freely available from Blackmagic Design. And I've used this before and I think they're great little clips for practicing. So we're gonna try to get it where we can see her uh, face a bit more. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose different uh, color spaces, gammas, uh, in the input and the output to see what happens, okay? And we're going to leave these scopes open so you can kind of see what's going on. For the input color space, this was taken with the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. So we're going to go ahead and choose the Blackmagic Design Pocket 4K Gen 4. And we're going to, for the input gamma, we're going to put we're going to also select uh, pocket 4k film gen 4 and then our timeline color space um, because this starts out with use timeline um, in our settings you can see that our timeline color space and our management's already at rec 709 gamma 2.4 so it's automatically mapping those but we're going to select it anyway so we're going to go rec 709 and then 2.4 so that we can then change these a bit later on okay so let's turn this on and off and see how much of a difference that made you can see here when we turn on and off that transform node how big of a difference that is here we have pocket 4k um, capture this is how it would look and obviously at least obviously to me this is not what would be considered a final and then when we turn on that transform you can see how different it is the colors look very different and the contrast is very different so you know clearly this is not what i would call a completed uh grade i mean just transforming something into rec 709 doesn't usually mean it's graded or even corrected or anything right all you're doing is transforming everything into the proper color space so you know there's other things here for correcting either the gamut which this is talking about the colors that are being seen and mapped and then you also have the tone which has to do with the brights and, uh, and all that and how they're mapped into the new color space so you know we can change this uh, if we go to the vector scope if we map the saturation to fit rec 709 there's a pretty drastic difference if you look especially here um, and in areas over here you should be able to see how different that looks okay so all this is really doing is making sure that the color saturation is being mapped into the rec 709 color space correctly that's what we're doing this one, um, you don't have a lot of issues with the brights and all that being uncontrolled, but the luminance mapping also helps you. If we were to go into the waveform, um, you can see when we go from none to luminance mapping, how different that handles the brights. And there's a couple different things we can choose, simple, clip, um, and all these different things. And with luminance mapping, a lot of times you can just use that custom and kind of pull these knit values where you want. So remember before when we were talking about how in a color space you've got not only the colors, but you also have how the, the gamma values are being mapped and mathematically transformed into these different color spaces, you can go in and correct them if they're not being mapped 100% uh, to your liking. And then just to kind of show you how usually you complete a grade, right? We add a node and then we might do, you know, a little contrast adjustment, maybe bring this down, maybe you know, bring these up a bit. Uh, let's just leave it like that. Okay, so this would be like our correction. We have our transform and then we'd have a correction. Okay, so let's just see what we did. Original and with our uh, corrections as well as the transform. So this is more broadcast ready than this would be. Okay, so big difference, right? This is how our color spaces just kind of work together. Let's leave this down. This is our correction, right? We'll name this uh, correction and then we have our uh, transform okay so we're gonna leave this correction node on because I want to show you how this correction is not going to be applicable depending on what happens with our transform it'll be very different so uh, let's say we want we picked the wrong input color space or we just wanted to play around right so let's go here and we'll choose Canon Cinema Gamma let's see what happens you see how that changed? Okay. Uh, maybe it'll be easier with the vector scope on. 
because um, you know this is the capture but here we have uh, pocket 4k film see how much paler she looks and then we go to Canon cinema ga uh, cinema gamut which is a different color so we're basically feeding a different input color space and getting a different output from that and you can see how different that is now you may say you prefer the the way that this looks compared to the other one but this would be kind of like an incorrect transform essentially because your inputs are not accurate but remember we didn't change the gamma the the gamma was left the same so that's probably why the luminance values haven't really changed right but let's see what happens when we leave let's say pocket 4k film gen 4 as the input color space and then let's go and change the gamma let's pick uh, gamma 2.4 look at that see how different that is you see how we're you know we're going from 2.4 to 2.4 that any of the math that's happening and the corrections are just not really applicable they're not going to work correctly if we change the input gamut I mean we can change it to a bunch of different things and you can see how different that will treat this footage okay so we'll go back and let's see what happens when we change the output color space. Um, let's say, you know, lab CIE, what does that do? What does uh, Rec 2020 do? So remember before we said that there's a difference between Rec 2020 and Rec 709, right? Well, Rec 2020 looks drastically different, doesn't it? Look how green and weird this all looks. This would not be correct on a Rec 709 monitor but if you had a Rec 2020 monitor and you graded it properly for Rec 2020, it would probably look correct. But since the vast majority of us watching this are not going to be using a Rec 2020 monitor, Rec 709 would make the most sense for what we're going to be doing um, for our deliverable. Does that make sense? I hope this makes sense because it really does um, matter for how you're going to be doing either you know your transforms or if you're going to be doing uh, your your grading, knowing how different this all can be if you're doing it doesn't matter if you're doing a color tra space transform or for using LUTs in any case you've got to make sure that you are grading your material for the correct color space um, and gamma that will be useful for you all right so I hope this was helpful for you I hope this makes sense um, for you all and um, please let me know in the comments if you do have any more questions. I mean, obviously there's a whole lot of stuff we could talk about, but I was trying to give you the basics and a little bit of an understanding as to how it all works. Um, how, you know, there's a lot of different color spaces. There's different gamma curves. There's a bunch of different stuff with this. I did it, you know, as simple of a job as I can. Hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how all this works um, for your work. Uh, again, got any questions, please let me know if there's, you know, certain things that you're confused about or there's more material that you would like me to talk about on the subject i can do that it's a very very complex topic honestly with a whole lot of different kinds of uh, there's a lot of different gamma curves there's a lot of different color spaces a lot of people argue over which color spaces or gammas are better for certain things you know uh, for example you know if you're shooting something the the bigger the color space that you shoot in um, and the more information that you have and then you squeeze it down to a smaller color space is usually more helpful because you can do more stuff with it you know that all makes sense it's a lot to go over um, and uh, I hope that this at least gives you a basic understanding of what's going on with color space and gamma and how it all works